Hello and welcome to this short video on making a bubble-like material within Unreal Engine. So as you can see in front of you, this is my bubble material. Now this material is, is at the moment placed on a simple sphere. So it's animated, but all of the animation is coming from the material itself. Um, let me show you the material setup. So the first thing that you need to do is set up the material settings themselves. Now within this material settings, you can see we have, um, we're using the material domain surface, um, but below that we're using the blend mode translucent. Now, by setting the blend mode to translucent, it will open up the opacity pin. And that's a pin from zero to one, one being completely opaque and zero being completely transparent. Now, um, we also, in order to make this bubble, we also want to have the roughness pin. Now, under the normal settings, the roughness pin will be greyed out. In order to get the, uh, and that's because if you want something to be translucent, then you're talking about light passing through it. If you want something to be rough or shiny, you're talking about light bouncing off. So as, as standard, it doesn't uh, compensate doing both of these things. However, we would like, we need them, we need to do a bit of both. So um, if you said translucent, then if we go down here, and go into the translucent and in the lighting mode select surface translucent volume that will allow you to have um, uh, that will open up the roughness pin and this will allow us to make it shiny as well as translucent now there's one more setting that i've used and that is the tessellation multiplier this is because if i'm making this thing um move I, I want to have i want to have um uh i don't know i want to make sure it's got enough vertices for it to be able to move correctly so i'm i'm using the tessellation multiplier and in order to do that i am i need to change the setting for the d3 d11 tessellation mode to flat tessellation here okay so those are the settings you need to know about now, let's have a look at the different pins that I've used. Okay, so the first one here is base color, and it doesn't matter what you put into this really. So I could change this to a, a, a blue, and it will just change the color of the bubble. Okay, there you go. Now, I've set the specular and the roughness, the specular to one and the roughness to zero. Um, the next thing that I've done, which is a little bit more complicated, is the opacity. Now, in the opacity, I'm using a, I can never pronounce this, but a Fresnel node. Um, and I'll show you what this is doing. So if I right hand click on the Fresnel and I go start previewing node, you can see that this is giving me a different value dependent on the angle of that the angle of the normal to the camera. So you can see you've got this white and that would be one around the outside and then you've got zero you've got as black. Okay so what this is allowing me to do by plugging it into the opacity is have a different opacity setting for the edges versus the opacity in in the middle. So if I stop previewing that now um, you can see what I'm doing with this is I am pushing this through a lerp. Um, uh, for, so this is giving me my two different opacities. And then I am clamping the output to 0.6 and the max to 0.9. This is just what I, I played with. Um, and that, that works for me. My Fresnel I've got an exponent of two and base reflecting ref, base reflect refraction of minus 0.5. Okay, so that is my opacity. The next thing I want to talk about is the world position offset. 
So if you watch this, you can see that it is bobbing up and down a little bit. Now, this is because I am altering the world position offset. Now to show this in a bit more extreme, I'm just going to increase that to 50. And I'm just going to multiply it to 50. And you can see that this is, is now moving a lot more. So that, that's, that's basically what it's doing. Okay, so the way I am doing this is I have a texture sample, which is just gradient from the top to the bottom, which goes black to white to black again. And if I... Uh, if I display this, you can see how this is doing. So when it is white, it's slowly going up and down. When it is white, it is it is uh, applying 50-50 uh, to the world position. And when it is black, it is applying nothing. So that's, that's what makes the vertices move. Okay, now if I uh, stop the previewing, the panner is just to... Um, mean that just to pan this texture over the top. The now with the panner, for example, if I speed this up, it's going to speed up the. Uh, okay, let's let's just try twenty. Okay, so you can see that this will just speed up the speed of the uh, of the of the texture movement. The multiplier as well also will have an effect on speed because this is going to change how big the 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 um, the texture is. So how what size the texture is scaled to. So say for example, if I put that to twenty, you we're going to get a bit more of a funky a funky thing because what's happening is the the texture is now smaller than, than the model itself so it, it's repeating over and over again for the whole model so it gives you quite a different look okay I forgot what I had that on I think it was about 0.3 if you go below one it's going to grow it so if I do it at one you should see it so doing it at one means that the, the, the whole thing is going to be over one go three means that uh, the texture is actually three times larger, three times larger than the uh, than the model itself. Okay, so that's how I had that set up. I'll probably reduce that back down to ten. Okay, so the last three nodes, I put ten into the ten tessellation multiplier just to make this smoother and make sure it has enough vertices. And 0.5 into ambient occlusion and 0.5 into refraction. They're just numbers I played with to make sure that it worked okay. Okay, as per normal, I will place this code. I'll paste the code in the description for you. And there you go. That's that is my bubble material. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.